Okay, Bishop, just tell me what um, you consider the most important aspects of what you've been doing today. Uh, we've been talking today about a um, project to welcome back into church uh, the huge numbers of Catholics who've stopped practicing, so-called lapsed Catholics, of the approximately 5 million Catholics in the UK. Uh, up to 80% of them might not be in church on a Sunday. Uh, and it's those that we want to reach out to and say, um, welcome back, um, come back as you are. And to do that, we need to be able to train um, Catholics in those communities to be able to give them that message. So why do you think they're not going to church? There's a whole raft of reasons why people stop going to church. Some of them have simply drifted away. Um, even moving house can be uh, a reason why people just lose touch with their local parish. Um, people with young families finding that the children have things to do on a Sunday. Um, occasionally it's personal trauma, you know, they fell out with the church over this and that. Some have fallen out with the church over some of the big, difficult moral issues. But um, one thing we can't do is give specific details um, which are accurate. So what's new about this initiative? Because there's been the Decade of Evangelisation and lots of previous initiatives, um, especially in this Westminster Diocese, actually. But um, what's new about what this nas new national initiative? Uh, what's new about it, what's prompted it, really, is, um, first of all, the visit of Pope Benedict XVI back in 2010, uh, which had a significant impact on not just the Catholic community, but uh, the community in this country generally, because I think it was such a surprise that Benedict came across as sympathetic, non-judgmental, kind. Um, I think it was your own paper said he went from uh, God's Rottweiler to being your favourite granddad. Um, I think that was your line, and that was a really good way of putting it. Um, and then Pope Francis, of course, comes across uh, a very different sort of person, but uh, a person with huge emphasis on God's mercy and the joy of being a, a Christian and a follower of the Lord. So of those two things, um, that prompted us to say, these things now we need to capitalise on, um, capitalise on the Benedict and Francis effect, and tap into um, people's needs. This is all about um, the needs of the, the so-called labs, and not about our numbers. This is saying to those people, um, if you want to come back, find your way back in, we'll find a way to help you. It's about their needs, not ours. Now, the last few years have seen the rise of the new atheists and then the church, the Catholic Church, as well as the Church of England a little bit, oh well a lot, has had its problems with paedophile scandals and um, that have been damaging to the reputation of both um, institutions. And um, there have been, so, some of that may be reflected in the, in the numbers, but yesterday the Archbishop of York was praying on national television for Andrew Marr, who's recently returned to work after his stroke. And um, but there does seem, from where I'm sitting, to be a new openness to the idea of faith being something good again, not something to be reviled or attacked. Is that, do you think that's happening in your experience? Well, I think, first of all, there's a bit of a myth around the, uh, the new atheism, that um, it became you know, headline news for a while because there were very loud advocates. I mean, Dawkins is very successful um, in terms of selling books, but, um, you know, how found that um, experience was, uh, I have doubts about. I don't think there was a huge wave of atheism. I don't think people were particularly hostile to religion, not broadly. Uh, a few, I said, a few loud voices, and, um, and some with good reason that the church, um, the Catholic church, we have to hold our hands up and beat our breasts if we do that, those two things at the same time, uh, and say that we've, we've failed in terms of um, our own high standards. Uh, were compromised by the child abuse scandals. Um, now, whether that had um, profound effects on uh, church going uh, is doubtful, because the, um, the church in Ireland did their own surveys when they were hit even harder than we were by child abuse scandals, and they found that um, people had lost faith in the institutional church, especially in church leadership, but had confidence still in their local parish priest. And I think that's, that's the case here. And uh, whatever we feel about the church as a, a national institution or international institution failing. Uh, our parish priests are still good, they're reliable, dependable. So what can the church give, you say this is about helping the needs of the people then, what can the church give them that they might not be getting at the moment? Uh, first of all the message that um, you're welcome, come as you are. You don't have to be um, 
if you walk around a church on a Sunday morning, very often um, they're largely white in many areas, uh, well dressed, well heeled, apparently respectable, um, giving the impression their lives are all together. Um, and if you don't feel you belong to those categories, you're not going to feel welcome. And we need to say to people, no, no, come as you are. There's a place here for everybody, no matter where you've been, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter uh, how you feel about yourself, come in and we hope you will experience the joy and welcome that Jesus is holding out to you. This is all about the Lord saying, you know, the prodigal son, um, I don't want to know, I don't want to know where you've been, just come back, it's good to see you here. And do you think people are suffering out there? I think many um, who found you suddenly, gosh, I've lost touch with the church, many um, are suffering that sense of um, isolation and distance. And um, they, they know that in the years they've been away, the church has changed. And um, I think many feel um, even more of a, a, at a distance now because it's a church they're not familiar with. Um, it's a church that you know, they left, they lost contact with years ago. And now they don't know what the new church is like. So they're the people who need to say, look, come on. Um, you won't feel awkward when you come in. We'll make sure you don't feel awkward. We'll have someone with you. That's a very important thing. We'll have someone with you to hold your hand, metaphorically and literally sometimes. Right, now we sit, now we kneel, now we stand, now we say this prayer, here are the words. And uh, you won't feel like, uh, you know, you won't feel as though everyone's looking at you and saying, you know, what, what's that person doing here? They're very simple messages, but they're very profound messages for someone who is searching for a way back.